Good morning. Welcome to Smartphones 101 with our speaker, Sherry Lejeune. This program is brought to you by Osher Lifelong Learning at George Mason. For more information on OLLI at George Mason, please see our website, OLLI at gmu.edu. Okay, good morning, Sherry. The program is yours. Go ahead and start. Good morning, everyone. Um, I will tell you right now, all I can see is the presentation, uh, nothing else. And Meg is going to help uh, with your questions that you can put in chat. I do realize that many of you have various degrees of capabilities for your iPhone. And I'm going to touch upon what I consider to be very basic information for you, it may not be so, but the good news is because this is being taped is that there are links so that you can revisit and um, go deeper into the material you see today. So with that, let's start. And at any time you have questions, um, not so much one-on-one, -on -one, but general that is not there, uh, please use chat. So right away, the easiest place to go for Apple questions is Apple support. They're very good. And if you click on Apple support, we could go to that link um, on the web and it has everything. You can use the search button and it's very effective to find categories. Here's the number one thing I think a lot of people miss out on. And, and some of you do have older equipment. You might even have iPhone uh, fives. Um, there's nothing wrong with having older equipment as long as you keep your software up to date. You will know it because your phone, every time you look at the general settings, it's going to have that one on it. It might even have more than one. It may have two. It may have three. So you click on that and you go to install and it should update. If you have a five, you will not be able to get beyond the operating system, which is iOS 12. Right now, Apple is into iOS, which is again, just short for the operating system, what makes your machine work, your phone work, um, is 13.6, which I myself updated last night. So, you know, everything on your phone is considered an application. So I just put what I feel are the most common ones, the calendar, weather, Google Maps, things to do. Um, most of you probably do text, uh, email, of course, talking, there's something new, <laughs> web searches, online ordering, health exercise, and an emergency feature. If your software is updated to iOS 12, you will be able to use the wonderful emergency feature on the iPhone. So we're going to try something here. Um, and you can see new apps are released every day. You can have fun and, and they can do very important tasks. So let's try a few things here. Um, first of all, let's go back for a moment. Pick up your iPhone, which I hope is by your side. All right. And click if you have an older phone the home button if you have a um, 10 or sc plus or even if you're lucky enough to have the the very latest the 11 or the 11 pro um what i want you to do is to just look on your screen and i'm going to go to calendar so I'm opening calendar and if you're like me and have allowed other calendar features to come on, I have the link that I saved from Ollie for today's class for Zoom. I also have two friends birthdays and that seems to be it. 
I don't always get the right messages on my calendar, but I'm going to show you something as a little sneak preview to what I'm really focusing on today about changing your ability from having to look on your desktop to the fact that I can do anything right now. Let me look up my iWatch, it is now 45. Watch what I'm going to do by just hitting the home button. Calendar, blue pill, 10 o'clock. I didn't find any appointments about blue pill for today at 10 a.m. Shall I create it? Yes. Your appointment is scheduled for today from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Now, you heard an English voice. It wasn't, it wasn't your ears deceiving you. I just like to make it fun and pretend that perhaps I'm somewhere other than just Northern Virginia at times. So I do use that English voice. But you can see, I hope you can see, blue pill at 10 a.m. And we're going to leave that on. So you did see that I didn't even have to look at my calendar. I can do this for anything. I can say, for example, now a lot of you have cars that have nav systems. I don't know if you've perfected how to link your phone with your nav system, but I'm gonna show you the old fashioned way just in case you didn't have that. I'm going to say directions to Whole Foods in Vienna, Virginia. Getting directions to Whole Foods Market. And so you can see already without even looking at my phone, I hope you can see this, I have the directions how to get to Whole Foods. And again, I didn't have to look at my screen. So let's go on. And again, the apps, everybody asked me what apps. You know, when we all first got our iPhones, everybody was like, oh, have you tried this one? Have you tried that one? I think now, because the iPhone is 11 years old, or is it 12 years old? It's either 11 or 12, is that we pretty much know what's the best use for our, for our phones. Because most of us have other devices, which we do he more heavy duty work on, such as um, working with Word documents, because maybe you're a volunteer, or maybe you still work, and you need that software. But um, so you probably have most of the basic apps that the phone comes with um, that work out for all your needs. But, you know, there are things like I love the fo taking photographs with my phone and I have installed a lot of apps. For example, I can take any picture and I can turn it into um, a 19th century quantalism or I mean so many styles and I can make them goofy as well. So that's just basically your pers personal choice on what you want. And as you can see, I say, go to, the, go, to the, go to Google and think about the kind of things you wanna do or go, you see the app sign on the screen. You can go to that for iPhone and every day they're promoting new apps all the time. And one of the positive things is when you go to the Apple App Store, again, use that icon, which is built into your phone, see what the reviews are from real users, okay? And the more you read the reviews, you might see somebody who says how they're using it that might ring for your own needs. So one of the things that happens all the time with your iPhone, and especially those of you who might have older phones, um, you have limited storage because you've taken so many photos and you haven't allowed the cloud. And we all, you know, if you don't know what that word is, all it is, it's a digital storage locker. Pretend it's, um, I'm trying to think of the name of storage companies around here in Northern Virginia, public storage. Um, that's all it is. It's storage space. And many companies, online companies like Google, like Apple, all offer 
storage space and how they entice you to use their apps, even Amazon, excuse me, they give you X number of gigabytes in terms of putting the material on. And then you'll find out you might run out of the storage. So on your phone, this is very important. Again, you go to your settings and on your settings, I'll do that right now. Again, uh, hopefully you can see this, that settings icon. I'm going to click that little, it looks like a gray fan, doesn't it? And now I am sorry, I'm going to get on the right network because we have several internet connections in my in my house. And I'm going to go to general. Where are you? Where are you? Okay. So you can see on this under the iCloud, in fact, I'll just say open my iCloud. I don't see an app called iCloud. <laughs> you see that even I have something. I thought I was going to be very clever with you and do it that way, but it didn't work that way. And so now, here we go. Okay. It's under who you are at the top where you have your email, passwords, and so um password and security. And then further down, it says iCloud. So I'm tapping on that. Sure. I yes. Your, your screen really isn't visible. Your background is kind of interfering with it. So my screen, you mean my backdrop? Your phone screen is not. Visible. Okay. It's okay. Thank you. Because I won't. All right. Thanks. I won't be, I won't show it. I'll just verbally say it. So I am looking at my storage for my iCloud. And I've already used up 267 gigabytes out of two terabytes. And I know, I know that the reason why that is so is because I have so much visual material. I have videos, I have photos. And of course, I'm looking, you can see the little bar. And of course, it's absolutely right, is that that's my problem. Then there's a tab underneath that that says manage storage. So when I hit manage storage, it allows me to look at files that I might, it, oh, of course, the very first thing that Apple wants to say to you, oh, you could change your storage plan and you could get even more. And, you know, I pay ten dollars a month for two gigabyte now that seems very reasonable however i pay storage on google vimeo um and i confess that i am guilty of having too many storage lockers you know pretty soon they're going to put the padlock on my storage locker and maybe there'll be a program about people buying out people's cyber lockers right but anyhow um, and then interesting enough there's a downgrade option which means if I think I'm not going to let's see I've actually never clicked on that that's interesting so obviously it's telling me if I was a better user and not and if I eliminated a lot of my photographs which seems to be taking up most of the space I might be lucky. And you know, we all have those photographs when you go look in your album, by the way, the um, photo, in case you all know the photo, which is the colorful pinwheel. When you look at that, you know, we all have those photographs where we didn't realize we had hit the take the picture button and you can see your feet, you can see your elbow, um, I'm famous for that. Even burst photographs where unbeknownst to you, it's either in your pocket or your pocketbook and something has clicked on that and you find out you have 200 images of nothing you planned on taking. So onward, um, again, you'll have all of these available to go back and revisit on how to's. Now, again, searching what's on your screen this is quite a few apps and frankly, you know, my 
screen looks as bad as this, but because I primarily use what's coming up, what I tested with you just a little while ago, you will see. Now, here's a, before we get to, again, back to Siri, let's look at Control Center. You know, let's face it, most of us are not using this, um, and we should, because Control Center gives you, as it says, instant access to useful control. So with your phone in your hand, let's just um, put your finger at the bottom and scooch it up, okay, on your screen, right? And of course, just when I want to do that, oh, because I'm still navigating to Whole Foods right now. Oh, that's pretty funny. So I now have my control screen up, and um, it's very similar. Now, a lot of you, when it's late at night, you're always saying, oh, damn, I know I have a flashlight on my phone. Where the heck is it? Well, the easiest place, there's two ways to do it. First of all, it's on the control center. And hopefully you've used your finger and swiped up. But if you have a, if a, if you have a 10 or later, 10 or 11, it's from the right corner down. You can see um, ID, the face ID are the ones that are uh, 10 and the 11s. You go from the top right edge and swipe down. Um, and then again, for those of us who have home buttons, which are the older iPhones, all you do is swipe up. And you see, you can see all these things, volume controls, um, calculator. I mean, all these things which you might need and you can get to your camera even easier. And a wonderful thing that I found today, which I confess I've never used, is a little round button. In fact, it kind of looks like the old CBS logo. Remember that from the 1960s, the beach ball with the eye in it? It looks like that. And guess what that does? That captures your screen. And why would you want to do that? Well, say there's another way to save your screen. But say you're on a website for a restaurant and you want to access it later and you've gone to the website on your phone and uh, you want to remember that or you're going to talk to one of your family members to revisit that. All you do is you hit that button and it captures everything on the screen and guess where it saves it? It saves it in photos. So that is very convenient. Um, there are other ways to do it uh, in terms of pushing buttons. You can hold that home button with your thumb, uh, depending if you're right or left-handed. I'm a righty, so I'm going to use my right thumb. And then with my, my finger, my index finger, I'm going to touch the right-hand side of my phone and click those together. And it saves it. So it's very, very cool. Okay. Vince has raised his hand. Um, Matt, uh, Meg, can you tell me? Is he having uh, a question? He's lowered his hand, but Lou has had his hand raised. Do you want to see? Okay. So remember, you have to help me because I can't see anything on Zoom. I can only see my presentation. So gentlemen, can you ask, ask are you asking a question? Lou, can you unmute and ask your question? Do they need help unmuting? It's something they have to do themselves. Okay. Um, hold that thought. It really you... is easier if they either use the chat or the question and answer. Okay. Because that way it doesn't take so long to get their questions online. Okay. And hopefully they'll use that. And um, if we go forward and it was something about control center, um, don't worry, I'll answer everything. And again, on, on your control center, uh, there's just tons, there are voice things, you know, um, say you're outside and you really don't want to take a video, but, you know, a cardinal is speaking to you and you want to capture that, you just hit the voice control on the control center. Again, very, very, very useful. And it, with everything, all you have to do is practice. You know, 
and nothing's going to happen. You're not going to break your iPhone. And Lou now has raised his hand. Lou, you need to use the chat or unmute yourself. We have a question from Chan, and he says, where is the CVS button to do the screenshot? Okay. So on your control panel, okay, let's go back. On the control center, if you have an older iPhone, you have taken your finger, well, I'm a righty, so I'm going to use my right index finger. I'm starting from the bottom of the camera, and I'm swiping up, and that gives me as you can see on the screen, this control um, center screen. Now, on this one that I'm showing you, it's missing a lot of features that are on all the updated operating systems. Again, remember, I've updated to 13.6, and this looks like about a 10, uh, back to the operating system that was a 10. But now there are many, many, many more features. So you have to try to get to the control center. And once you get to that control center, again, you'll see a round center and an, a, a, a circle with the dot inside of it. And when you tap that, that's a screen capture. Again, the other way to do it is, again, right or left, I'm a righty, index finger on the home button you will see you know don't, not on the side that has the two buttons which are volume controls but the side of the camera which is on the right as you're facing it you do that at the same time and i've just done that and i've taken a lovely picture of um again maggie said not to do this but let me see if i put it back further I have just captured my screen and then it says done. And when I hit done, it says save to photos or save to files or delete. And I'm going to say save to photos. Okay. So again, if there's something I need to address with um, that raised hands, we'll go back to it. So how many of you, I can't see you, but I hope, hope, I hope, I hope that some of you are using Siri because frankly, this is, I'm not trying to be cruel because many of you might be using hearing aids. So that's not the point or may have impaired vision, but Siri is a tool that will enable you to use your phone. A lot of you might have arthritis and have issues with um, getting to the keyboard or operating the icons with Siri, they, you, you, don't, you don't ever have to look at the screen ever again, ever again. And I'm serious. So I'm going to prove to you this is possible. So once, uh, first of all, you have to make sure you've enabled Siri. So again, go to your settings, right? Go to your settings, please. And under general, this is funny. Mine's doing all kinds of interesting things here. Okay. And if you go down, just when you hit the, the, the gear, you don't have to go. Don't hit anywhere else. Keep scrolling down, scroll down past wallpaper, and you'll see Siri and search. Click on that little arrow. And I've disabled the thing, say, hey, Siri, because frankly, I don't want to have to say, hey, Siri, every time you heard me when I asked for those directions to Whole Foods, I did not say, hey, Siri, it just connected to me. The ask that I had, it connected to what I wanted. So um, you can see allow Siri when locked, which is very important because if you are in an emergency situation and you can't remember your passcode to get in, you want Siri to help you right away. And it says language, voice, uh, uh, and where the Siri voice is, that's why I have the English accent. You have several choices here. You can have an Australian English accent. It, it, whatever your base language is, that's the accent it's going to give you. So, you know, you have American English, English, uh, UK English, uh, Australian English. So um, you have to enable Siri to have it work. That's the most important thing. 
because a lot of people, I see them and they're talking to their phones and they keep saying to me, it's not working, it's not working. And then we find out the issue is they have not turned on Siri on their phone. So again, here we okay. go. Real quick, before you go, go on, they're still having problems finding that uh, screen capture button. And it's the question is, where is it on the 11 Pro? Okay, that's a great question. And um, watch this with Siri. I'll get to use that for a question. Where is the screen capture button on an iPhone 11? I found this on the web. Okay, April 23rd, 2020. I think this is probably a good one to use. And let us see what support says. Okay. Now, on an 11, it is... Pushing on both. In fact, I might, you know what? I might have that in the slides. Let's see. Nope. Let's go back for a second. Um, it says on an X or later, press the side buttons. You press the volume up button and the side button on your 11 at the same time. So first of all, make sure you have something on your screen that you want to capture. And again, volume up button and the side button on your 11. So please try that um, and let me know if that worked. Okay. Uh, it says uh, iPhone X or later. Um, so again, uh, it's giving you information about the more updated things. When you release the side button on the newer phone, Siri stops listening, which is interesting. And again, if you have a home button, you just hold it down through your entire request. In other words, it's not like Alexis, Alexa, where um, once you ask Alexa, you don't have to keep saying her name. Well, you don't have to keep saying Siri either, as long as you're pressing down your home button. Or again, if you have a newer device to be holding on to those two buttons. So um, here's something I hope you will enjoy. You remember these two? Do you remember these two from um, uh, a couple of years ago? I thought this was a very cute video. So if it's too corny for you, I apologize. But this is a good morning laugh. If I can get it to go, here we go. And of course, just when I want it to play, it's not playing. Okay, why are you not playing? Let's see. Gosh, I gave you such a great build up and now I'm not delivering. I am not sure why that is not working. Of course, it worked for us when we were in our practice session. Uh, Meg, do you have any ideas? Um, I click on the play button again. Okay. I've done that several times. It's uh and no, it's not doing anything. Yeah, no. It's trying. I see the little gear, I see the little circle trying to uh do its thing, but um very odd. Oh well, maybe we can get back to that later. Sorry about that. Um, but for those of you who know how to do it, I mean, I'm going to show you something very funny as we're practicing Siri. Watch this. Siri, open YouTube. Okay, Siri opened YouTube for me. And now I am... I could use my voice, but I'm going to use the little, as you know, the magnifying glass is universally the search button. And I am going to say Granny Tech and how to use Siri. And I'm hitting search and here it is. And we'll let you listen to the, to the, at least to the 
magazine Wired. Meet Bruce and Esther Huffman. You may remember them from YouTube, where they became a viral sensation after their granddaughter posted this hilarious video of them fumbling with their new webcam. Do you remember this? I don't know what I'm recording. Shucks. You remember that at all? I hope you can say. Well, we here at The Daily feel that technology is for everyone. And we figure if we can show the Huffmans how to use our favorite apps and games, then anyone can learn. So we headed to their hometown of McMinnville, Oregon, with some high-tech gadgets for them to try. Siri will open your calendar and put in a reminder so you don't have to write it on the calendar. Oh, and hair appointments, yeah. all that dentist appointments, honey. We start by... Int so I'm stopping it there because, again, when you go back to these slides, you'll see the name, what to look for in YouTube, which is Granny Tech, how to use series. It is very, very funny because um, just like you will probably experience if you really haven't used it much, um, it's all in the ask. It's just like Alexa also. If for those of you who have voice command, um, you may have a Google Home as well, but anybody who has an Alexa device, you know, it's how you ask. And the same thing with Siri. In other words, you're not having a general conversation with Siri. You're gonna be very direct, um, just as I was doing uh, to ask questions. So now, of course, now it's not gonna go forward because it uh, was having so much fun. Okay, let's see if I can use, there we go. So once you master, and again, for Siri, I showed you about the calendar and hopefully, how far away? Oh, I didn't hear the alarm go off for my calendar. And, oh, I didn't say set the alarm. Oh, gosh. So now, okay, here we go. Something better. Set an alarm for 1030 a.m. to take a blue pill today. I've set your take a blue pill today alarm for 1030. Okay. So, and by the way, it says on my clock, 1030 a.m. And you can, it's a green bar and it says take a blue pill today. You can do that on the calendar um, as well. And I, and because I use multiple calendars on my phone, I have Google as well as the built in calendar um, which is Outlook for uh, the iPhone. There's another thing which you've probably never used are the shortcuts. You know, it's something that I only recently started to use because you're probably like me. You do a lot of things over and over again on your phone. And again, if you're not using Siri, you're you know, you're standing there and you're going through it. Where is that darn thing? Where, where is that Starbucks app? Or where is that Whole Foods app? Uh, if you're like me, I do shop Whole Foods and you know, they do have an app that you save money if you're a Prime member. And that would be the kind of shortcut you might want to use. Okay, if it's, if it's not Whole Foods, how about Giant? Because even your Giant or your Safeway um, they'll have apps which you can use and do a shortcut as well. So, you know, there are many tips and tricks to use, which what it means is you'll see the shortcuts. I can say, open my shortcuts. So when you see the shortcuts, again, I'm going to hope you see this. I'm going to put it right by my face. And if you can't see it, I apologize, but I hope so. It opens up. I only added, what's this plant? Because I'm currently, I have a, another hat that I wear. I'm the president of the National Capital Area Garden Clubs, and there's 63 clubs in the DMV. And everywhere I go, everyone expects me to know every plant on the planet. And it's embarrassing because I do not. And so I have Plant Snap. I actually have four plant identification apps. When you talk about 
what apps should I choose? Well, if you're a gardener, you might want to add some of those um, to your phone for sure. But so um, because they had this wonderful feature called what's the plant, because I put it in my shortcut, I don't have to look for it on my phone. All I have to do is tap it and it immediately goes to plant snap. And again, I don't know if you're going to see this, but you see it opened it up right away. And I could take a photograph of whatever plant I'm challenged by not knowing what it is. So again, you'll revisit this after this session is done, maybe not today, but when you go back and look at this and you're going to work setting up some shortcuts with things which you do all the time. So again, um, here's somebody who orders, uh, the example was, um, <laughs> This is pretty funny. At Phil's Coffee, the Philharmonic, which, uh, look at that. I don't use sugar anymore, and I try to avoid heavy cream. But anyhow, you can see that their example was um, a favorite coffee shop. Most of us are not going to coffee shops anymore. So right now, your Siri shortcuts probably um, might be about web searching that you want to do in terms of certain websites that you visit all the time that you want easier access to. So the combination of using Siri and the Siri shortcuts is pretty valuable in terms of time saving um, and cuts down on frustration. So visuals, okay. All of us um, need help with this, I believe. And Many of us don't know how to do this. I didn't know, know how to do this for a long time. And this is about changing text size displays on website. So what you do is when you go to a website and, oh, where did the picture go? Where are you picture? Okay, well, you use the view member, the photograph on this dropped out, but it would have showed you the website. And in the corner, usually the left-hand corner, it's going to say um, view or reader. Now, if you don't change it, it automatically goes into the reader view. It's personal taste of what's easier for you to read. I usually go back to the um, website view. And the reason why I do that is often there'll be links and so forth that I need to see. And so you will see on most good websites, they will have in the corner left-hand side, excuse me, <coughs> they will have font choices and you'll see a little A and a big A. If you would like to see what you're uh, looking at in a larger font, click the larger one. And again, the search field. Uh, and again, it's personal preference. I'm I'm big on the website view. A lot of people just like the reader view because it's more like um, uh, reading a Kindle, okay, on, on a website. And maybe some of you are already familiar with those choices. So we got to do everybody's favorite, the camera, right? Um, some of you know how to use this. Some of you just kind of point and hope you get the right thing. I mean, I teach a camera course. Um, I haven't done it at all, eh? but I, I've taught it probably, gosh, 20 different sessions all over um, Arlington, Alexandria, uh, Maryland, um, for people to have a better feel, particularly about editing. It's not about pushing the camera button, it's about the choices of what's the best selection for the kind of photograph you wanna use, as well as how can I edit? Because the trick is always in the editing. Um, and you can see, uh, I chose this for different time-lapse, slow-mo, video, photo, square, and pano. And there are different views here of the same image um, of how you wanna frame this. You can see slight changes. You can see the scale of what a photo is. A portrait mode, I don't have an updated iPhone, so I do not have that. But for those of you who I know who in my audience have 
uh, an 11, you had that beautiful feature um, and they and the portrait mode does take fabulous photographs. Um, and then the square, and the square to me is just um, very useful for a lot of reasons in terms of if you're doing thumbnails for a project uh, or sharing uh, with family or whatever. And Pano, as you know, uh, again, with the updated cameras, you have a wide angle. So you don't really have to press that. I don't know if it's Pano. I apologize for not knowing that, but the Pano, even on the older iPhones, even going back to the iPhone 4 had Pano where you would hold your camera up and you'd be in a large group and you'd hit it and you'd go very slowly. And remember how you watch the bar, the arrow to make sure you're holding the camera very steady and straight to get the group in. Um, those are some of my favorite shots for those meetings where you have 50 or more people because you're challenged, obviously, to use the standard formats to get everybody in. So adjusting light and color. I'm going to walk you through this, but you're going to practice it. And how you're going to practice it is you're going to take a photo that the lighting isn't very good. In other words, it's pretty dark. And then you're going to play with the feature because when you hit on your phone, by the way, when you uh, are on your camera and you're looking at a photo, and I've got to go back here, and I'm looking, that's a video. Okay, good. I found one of last night's storm. And so when you hit the edit button, when you've actually taken a photograph, when you hit the edit, you are going to see the controls. Um, you're going to see the little magic wand and that magic wand is just the auto. You're entrusting Apple to fix your photo is basically what it is. Um, and then you'll see a yin and a yang, which I thought was very interesting that uh, Apple chose to use the yin and the yang. And the yin and the yang is just a way where it's a great little dial that all you have to do with your finger is you move it back and forth and it changes the lighting in your photograph all by itself. It's, it's very cool because obviously, like last night's storm, uh, I'll show you and again, I apologize if it's not that clear. I have really enhanced those menacing clouds and then I'll show you actually where it was to begin with. That's what I had started with. And so you can play around. Now, on that, at the bottom, you are going to see some more features. So again, we don't have the time. I mean, to just do the camera is a whole other session by itself. Um, and it is fun, but you have to have faith in yourself that just by, by working with your uh, iPhone, you can kind of, you can figure it out. Okay. So maybe you press the wrong control uh, in terms of the feature you wanted, but you know, you'll start to get it. I promise you and crop, rotate and flip. One of the worst errors that most people do is they want to get a portrait and they take the photograph like 10 feet away. And then all of a sudden the face that they were trying to capture, it's like all this other stuff you didn't want. So you can see on the slide, um, the crop feature, you can use that. And all of a sudden you can see the brackets and you can use your finger and you can manipulate it by, you know, using your fingers, manipulate the size and scale you want. I'm saying a face, but it could be a pet. It could be an insect. It could be a bird as a whole variety of things, which cropping um, makes a better photo in terms of more intimate uh, relationship of looking at a subject. So, and it just says, drag the rectangle corners to the area you wanna keep. And then to tap about the ratio, and the ratio is, you know, a lot of people again are going to use this for maybe for something else. Maybe you're in an organization where you need a photograph for a poster or you're, or you're making your own PowerPoint. So you can choose the scale. Uh, rotating, a lot of times 
I'm sure you've done the same thing. You, you're taking, you're, you're holding your camera horizontally. And of course, when you take that photograph, well, your photograph is going to be horizontal. And then you're going to like, well, I really, they really want to, I didn't really want a horizontal. I wanted a vertical. And so by tapping that, or you did it sideways um, and you didn't realize it. So again, you can rotate it and fix it. And the flipping uh, is interesting because sometimes um, this is a fun thing to try. Take a picture of two objects and by using the flip and you can say, I, I, that, I, I think that person should be on the left instead of the right. And you can totally, it's not only people, it's anything. It just reverses the image. And again, when you're done, very important to remember, save your changes. Okay, or get rid of them, your choice. And again, practice, practice, practice. You can't practice enough. Take one photograph and just work it to death in terms of all the things and choices you can do in terms of tone, in terms of scale, everything. Just keep practicing. So here's some more again to show you in real time. This is the straighten and just perspective. And it tells you how to do that. And again, look on your newer models, you lucky people who have 11. Um, it's so wonderful. You don't have to worry about this. It's going to do the work for you. Uh, the filter effects, again, of what I told you, uh, it actually in the, and unfortunately, again, the photo dropped out, which is interesting, but it will say the names of different things because Oftentimes, I'm sure you've seen them, how you've admired a black and white photograph. Um, well, that black and white photograph, yes, you can actually take a photo, by the way, to begin with in the tone you want. And again, go to your camera. Okay, go to your camera right now. And I am at the top right hand corner is that little three little filters on top of each other. And if you tap that, it's going to tell you, um, again, I hate to do this, but at the bottom, it shows all these little squares and it gives you different colors. So you see, I went from color to black and white. You can do that when you take the photograph or after you've taken the photograph, you'll see that you have a selection they give them hokey names like Mayflower or um, uh, Perpetua or Alta. I can't even name them, but the people who worked for uh, Apple had fun doing that. Those 22-year-olds who worked for them had fun naming them. Um, so marking up a photograph, this is kind of fun too. Uh, and a lot of kids, your grandchildren probably know how to use this quite well. Uh, again, you get a photograph that could already be stored on your phone, right? Pick up one, take one of your pictures, pull it up. And by marking, choosing to mark up your phone, you can literally draw or add text. Now, if you're an Instagram uh, account holder, I think you know that you have some really interesting capabilities that are identical to this feature, the mark up the photo, okay? And again, we're not gonna take too much time, but this is something to play with. You can add text, drawing, everything. And again, it, it depends. I mean, a lot of people use this for the families because I know during this COVID period, a lot of grandparents have taken selfie pictures of them and oh, there's my, alarm that I set for 1030 for my blue pill. So now I'm going to turn that off. Okay. Um, sorry about that, but it does work. You see it did work. And uh, uh, again, a lot of grandparents have taken selfies of themselves and then used the markup tool and say something silly and then text the photograph to their grandchildren. Um, Cause you know, they're very, you know, you got to be pretty fast and good with grandchildren who are tech savvy to make them laugh. Trimming a video, trimming a video. You know how you think, oh, I'm not going to start it until I'm really ready. But 99% of the time, 
I think we all find ourselves in the predicament that we push the start video way too soon, um, pretending we're uh, interviewing. I do a lot of interviews with a lot of people. And unfortunately, unless I tell them specifically, you know, I'm going to do this when I want you to start, they give me antidotes and then I have to cut it out. And I'm a, a stickler about it because once upon a time I used to work for the Today Show and yes, I was in all the scripting and writing. So I'm a crazy person about a good place to start. Now, again, you're not professionals. You're doing this for joy, but you know, we can all get better. And so when you go back to edit your video, all you have to do is say, Trim, it's so easy because you can see on that on that slide that little green thing. So you can cut it from the right or the left. Now, you can't edit it in the middle because you have to use different video software for that. And today, we definitely not have time for 101 to get into that. But for your general starter videos, practice. Um, take something longer and trim it. And there'll be a button on the right. You click, yep, that's what you want. And you can trim your video. I threw in health apps just for the heck of it. Because one of the great things about smartphones is that you can have all these fabulous apps. You know, your iPhone and even those of you who have the 11, you know, you can do your blood pressure, your heart rate. And of course, iPhones, do. Uh, sorry, I. I'm not even getting it. Apple watches, <laughs> Apple watches do the same thing. I can do my blood pressure, my beats per minute, my cardio. Um, and again, to be able to do that, if you have an older phone, update your software to at least 13 and you will be shocked at all the health applications you can use on your phone. But I just threw these in and you know, again, you can Google. I like iGeek's blog because they had all these fun things and they had reviews. And again, it's personal choice. What makes sense for you? Is it easy to use? And so forth. Now, again, one of the features that's, and some of you might already have them, you know, when we get older, it seems like everybody wants to buy us a thing to put around our neck. And honey, you know, I've fallen, I can't get up. Well, guess what? Your iPhone um, has that ability too. And this is very, very important. And you just push the, this is uh, two buttons on either side of your phone. In fact, when I was practicing this, you don't want to really want to practice this right now because it really works. It really works. And you really don't want um, the fire department to show up to your house today uh, because you couldn't get out of it. But read up on that. I have a link. And again, when you revisit this slideshow, you can click on that link and learn more about it. So now I am, if you help me, uh, hold on, I want to say thank you. And I'm going to stop sharing. And now we'll get to the good part. Now I can see your questions. Uh, um, one question that we've had basically since the beginning, well, will the presentation slides be forwarded to the, um, for the class? Yes. And I, th there's the YouTube, of course, and I will share it. I have to check with Ollie, by the way, because I know if I give them the link, um, or I guess I could post it in the class roster. I confess I didn't look at it this time but yes can you give me today is wednesday can you give me to friday and i will post it on your class it ollie is still working that way right meg where you yes it is okay you email so, it out to the class that's great so for everybody who's interested in that for those links uh you can do that so whatever you couldn't digest because i know this was kind of a big buffet today it's very hard it's a lot of information um, you will see my email available. They're never dumb questions. I volunteer uh, everywhere. I mean, I, I was like the technology go-to person for Shepherd Center forever. Um, and again, if there's anything I can help you with, uh, opinions, it's very hard. I don't want to be put in a position where I'm going to 
tell you, uh, oh, I, I prefer this app over another one. Because again, it's like anything, it's very personal of what uh, interest levels are. And so no chat, we have no, nobody, what do we have here? Nope. I have nothing open on the Q&A and I have no questions on chat right now. So, and we're done in 10. If anyone wants to raise their hand, now would be a great time to ask a one-on-one -on -one question. Uh, Sherry asks, what is the most common? We have raised hands. Okay, go ahead. Um, Sherry asked you, what's the most common mistake? Um, could you be more specific or, because again, it's what you're doing. Um, you mean mistake, meaning Siri, camera, you know, the worst mistake in terms of voice commands would be if you have not in your general settings, set up Siri the way you want to use it. Cause again, I told you, I don't have to say, Hey Siri, but again, I didn't, what I was going to say to you earlier, I call it the Helen Keller method. I'm going to tell you right now, I never, people are shocked when they realize how well Siri works. Because look, read me my most recent texts. Seven, four, seven, four, six, four said mom's rising. Unemployment insurance is at risk. Reply with a zip to call and demand your senator extended including the $600 a week boost in benefits. That, now, that's really funny. Would you I, like to reply? No. Um, I'm, okay, no other messages. That's literally when you say other messages, okay, and I can say, read my last email. You have only one email. At 10.15 a.m., Living Social Washington, D.C. sent you an email about a eyelid reduction plus up to 25% off. Okay, so there you go. Ads, ads, ads. Again, you can ask your phone what text you got. Or I can just say, look, send a text to Alex Lejeune. Which of these should I use for Alex Lejeune? Oh, it's asking me now which phone number. What do you want to say? Alex, I'm in a class and I'm using you as the guinea pig. Here's your message. Ready to send it? Send. Send. All right, Siri. You didn't send it, Siri. I'm very unhappy with you. Okay. I don't know why it didn't send, but send Alex Lejeune a text. Which of these should I use for Alex Lejeune? And what it's asking is I changed the settings where I could... Liter and it now it's Which voice commanding it's everything, either his Here's mobile phone or his email. Ready to send it? Yes, send. Okay, it's sent. And it heard my voice commands about setting, so it's sent. So in other words, um, and you probably can do that on your cars, a lot of you who have really good nav systems, but if you're not using a nav system and you're using your phone, you can do never leaving your eyes off the highway, sending texts to family, friends, or whomever. Uh, same thing with email. Um, the other mistake with, um, the other big mistake is not using iClouds. You've got to switch that on. You've got, do you know how many people tell me, I can't, I can't take a picture, you know, because again, because of the garden club stuff, say there's a flower show and I'll hear women saying, Oh, I haven't taken my photos off my phone. I don't have any space left. You should never be in that situation where you don't have any space left. Okay. If you're using a cloud, um, and again, if you're not a crazy person like me taking so much material you probably can still do it under the free ceiling of what you're given for free from apple versus me who has two terabytes um two terabytes but again don't let that happen to yourself in terms of even if you only have a 64 gigabyte um a phone a lot of the older phones everybody went out there they really didn't understand the storage like why would i need this 
And the other thing you should do, the other big mistake is get rid of apps you don't use. And there's a whole thing about, you know, getting rid of those apps. I have apps that I haven't used in two years. You know, truthfully, I need to dump them. And they're also using battery life. And you can, again, go into the settings and look at the apps that you have. It will list every app and it will show which apps are being used, the background the background of them. And if you have that green, that slider and it's green, well, it's sucking the power of your phone. And for me, because I have so much stuff on this, I'm only good for about two hours before I carry around portable chargers. And having a portable charger uh, with a cord, don't forget the cord because you need the cord. Uh, you need to use that. Because you don't want to be somewhere and you're gonna like, oh, oh, I really want to take a photograph of that, but oh, I only have I have like five percent of battery power. Don't let that happen to you. So here's another question: How do I ask to use Google? Okay, um, for example, I want to use Google Maps to get directions in the G. Okay, again with Siri, watch this. Open Google Maps. Opening Google Maps. By the way, if you want to start navigation hands-free, say, get directions using Google Maps. Do you see that? How easy? Never looked at my screen. I have Siri set up. I didn't have to say, hey, Siri. But if you didn't do that yet, say, hey, Siri, if you have Siri. And it opened up the maps, and it shows where I live. And now if I say I want to navigate again, um, you have to have an address. I'm going to think of another address. Can I think of, okay. Navigate to 3501 R Street, Washington, D.C. Getting directions to Arch Street, Washington. Guess what? I didn't say that. I didn't enunciate. And guess where it's sending me? It's sending me to Arch Street. So it's a little frustrating because the more you use Siri, the more... Again, this is artificial intelligence. The more the algorithms start to identify your speech. And um, for example, I'm sure you all remember when you would ask it to dial somebody's phone and Siri would come back and say, I'd like to learn how to say that better because, you know, our last name is Lejeune. That's how the French say or if you're a Marine, it's Lejeune. And when I lived in Westport, Connecticut, everybody was calling me Legumi. And because it was my second husband, I go like, eh, I don't think I'm going to be using that name until. And of course, the moment we moved to Washington, D.C., because of uh, the government, nobody, everybody knows how to say it correctly. But remember, it asks you, it tries to improve on understanding your speech. Now, if English is not your first language, Siri can still handle it. And you know, that's a whole other topic to change the language that you use. Because if you're Spanish speaking as your primary language, well, of course, Siri will understand you in Spanish as well. So I think, Meg, I have a we... whole bunch of questions. Also. Okay. Okay. First one is um, besides Planet Snap, what other plant? Oh, pardon me. Besides Plant Snap, what other plant apps do you use? Okay, that's a great question. And I'm looking right now because I'm I always um Cornell. I can never remember the name of the one of Cornell. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Uh, I naturalist. I lowercase I naturalist is a great app. Um and I'll I'll include that, Sherry. I'll. Uh, oh no, Sherry wants to call for help uh, without using the app. Well, you can use Siri because again, um, whoops, call emergency. Sorry, I don't have a phone number for emergency school. Who would you like to call? <laughs> you want to talk about? They don't always get it right. Um, you have to set that up in your emergency thing. And again, you don't even have to unlock your phone. That is on your phone face. But I'll send out the directions again. How do you use the calendar? It's very simple. 
I can either use it voice commands or you go to your calendar app, which is built into every single phone and you have choices. Again, play around with it. I landed on my calendar and I choose to look at it day by day. If I wanted to change it to, for something else, I say the view of what I want to see. There are different ways that you can see your calendar. You can see it by the month. You can see it by, it says today. So if I hit today, it will only show, look, it even has the blue pill on my calendar um, that was mentioned. So again, play around with it. Get used to what you want to look at in terms of Siri and adding things. The easiest thing is calendar, add a meeting for Friday, 2 p.m. with Arlene. Which Arlene? Okay, it's asking me which Arlene. Okay, I set up your appointment with Arlene Stewart for Friday. Okay. Ready to schedule it. Yes. I scheduled your appointment with Arlene Stewart for Friday from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Now, if I go to my calendar right now, guess what? That would be on it. Most people don't realize that when you're making a doctor's appointment or appointment, friends, family, whatever, the moment you have that date, take the time, use Siri, and add it to your calendar. You just say calendar on um, the day of the week or the date if you have it and the time. And you're done. You're good to go. Um, what do we have? How do you make Outlook your default email? Are you talking about on your iPhone? Because that's all we're dealing with. That's under mail. You go to your settings. Okay, go to your settings. And you will have scroll down. It's um, past the passwords and account under mail. And uh, you want to say how you want to use it. This is a whole bunch of all kinds of craziness. Of I have Gmail, so it's only showing me that as a default. But when you set up mail, it will ask you. It has a plus sign, and you add the account that you want to do. So besides photos, what do you store on the cloud? Oh, my gosh. PowerPoint. I could put today's PowerPoint on my phone. I put Word documents. I put everything because I also I've synchronized. For those of you who have other Apple devices, one of the great things is the files, photos, everything are in the cloud. Every time I access photos on my phone, they're the same photos I will see on my Apple Air and the same photos I will see on my iPad. Um, so I hope that answers it. How do you get rid of apps that Apple doesn't want you to decide from your eye? That's a great question. You know, um, I saw that today. Google that. Just say delete, um, delete iPhone 11 Pro apps, and it will give you exactly how to do it. Okay. Google that. Um, because I know there were uh, the list of basic stuff, which you probably don't need is very long and they'll tell you how to do it. It's almost like the old way where you go to your desktop and you put your finger on it and then remember the apps wiggle and jiggle and, and you talk about mistakes. I remember the first time that I get it, it's like, Oh no, I don't want to lose anything. But then when you hit the home button or on a, a newer model, you hit the side button, it'll stop jiggling and wiggling. So, I think that answers everything, and I think that our Lucy so has there. a raised hand question. So, Lucy, okay. if you want to ask your question again? Yeah, thank you for doing this. I do have a question. I don't quite understand how to delete the apps on on the iPhone, and my grandson has told me showed me this. I have an iPhone 11 or 10. Okay, you have an 11 because you have an 11. I told you, you've got to Google. It's not the same with people who have um, a home button, like my, right. uh, my, my, so Google delete iPhone 11 Pro apps. And trust me, when I saw that this morning, you're going to see 
and 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 I also have to warn you about when you Google if you don't know this already. Anything where you see in the corner it says "add," don't do it. Apple actually under Apple support when you go to Apple and click of the device, you know when you go to Apple.com, click the device, it'll say iPhone. And then it'll give you every, they're going to try to sell you something, but then you'll see the word support, hit support, and then you'll see the magnifying glass, type in um, deleting apps, and it will give you from Apple, I'm saying if you want to do it with the manufacturer's advice, but if you just want to straight Google it, everybody and their mother's doing uh, YouTubes, as you know, because everybody's trying to monetize social media today. So everybody's making YouTubes um, on technology. Uh, it's kind of funny. It's funny, but it's also frustrating. So what is a wallet? Now, a wallet is a place where you can put money from your account to go, for example, here I am, I'm back at Whole Foods. And as you know, it's not just Whole Foods. It's many, many, many um, brick and mortar uh, locations that all you do is you take your phone, you use your wallet, and you tap the pay, and it, it, it um, deducts it from the balance. I keep a very low balance in my wallet, okay? I keep a very low balance in my wallet because I don't want to make any mistakes of giving away something I don't necessarily want to give away. Um, and again, you can go to um, Apple support and again, the iPhone and say wallet and it will walk you through. Your bank has to be involved with the wallet, by the way, because it comes from your account, your bank account. So, um, unless you have a credit card uh, or a debit card. I use a debit card. That is what mine's connected to is my debit card from Bank America. Um, do you recommend a VPN? Uh, oy, 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 John. Um, a lot of people use that. But I think if you're a hacker, that VPN is not going to... The hackers, you know, in terms of the network, I will tell you this, because we're in COVID right now, most of us are not hanging around, let's uh, say Starbucks and using the free Wi-Fi. Um, let's hope that you have a data plan. That's another thing we did not discuss. If you have unlimited data, um, use your cellular link do not use the local Wi-Fi. That is what I'm going to tell you because when you use um, only strictly your cell uh, data, then you're not, I think you're less easy to be hacked by amateurs. Now, pros, I can't tell you, but um, let's face it, right now we're kind of hanging at home so we don't have that public situation. Um, a lot of people say, Oh, well, if I'm in Tyson's Mall, for example, um, and I'm using my phone, somebody close by could patch in while I'm using my phone. That's really true. I'm, I'm not going to tell you a lie. People today can literally get in on your network because of um, software that they have, which is a phishing thing. So, you know, you can talk to somebody, you can text somebody. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be at the Tyson Small actually be web surfing too much uh, myself. Um, but again, there's so many clever people today. It's really sad. But uh, any, I, I, I hope that helps. I mean, it's again choice. Uh, do you? Sorry. Um. Oh, geez. You know what? I can't do that because when you see the presentation. Um, everybody has different needs, you know, um, everybody has different needs and it's what your interest level is for me. I think today, I hope the takeaway is please use voice commands, stop being tethered to your screen and having to say, Oh, I wonder if I can find what I need when using your voice command, the Siri, 
will drill down to anything. You know, I could, for example, tell Siri, Siri, open the OSHA lifelong learning website for George Mason University. Here's what I found. And of course, it came up with it immediately. And you saw that I had eye contact with all of you. I was not looking at my screen. Okay. So again, as much as you can, please try practicing to make your life easier. Uh, Sherry, thank you. Um, that's what it's all about. Uh, I'm self-taught. I, I am self-taught. And I have enjoyed experimenting with, I've had the iPhone from the beginning. My husband knew the moment that they said the iPhone was coming out that he was going to be on the hook for getting me one. And uh, he did. But then remember, four months later, they dropped the price by $200. And all they gave back to the original people who we all stood in line was $100. But um, I, a lot of people have Android. I have appreciated seeing the high octane Samsung notes. Some of those um, Android operated products are fabulous. I cannot tell why they're fabulous. Nothing wrong with them. And if you can't afford an iPhone uh, or a fancy iNote that, you know, you're throwing away a thousand dollars, there's nothing wrong if you even have a five, if you update to an eight, because the thing that you have to remember, it's not about the device. It's about the software. I'm using the same software as ever, all of you who have an iPhone 11. The only thing I don't have is that beautiful pixelation that you get with the iPhone 11 and the Pro. I mean, come on. The visual, the way the screen looks, the way the photographs look, um, it's fabulous. So, um... If someone is near you, yes, that's airdrop. Okay, quick, grab your phones. Go to your camera. Go to your camera where your photos are. Click that rainbow button. Pick a photo and click on it. Click on it. Click. I clicked on my, my storm video. Click on a photograph. And in the bottom corner is that little square with the arrow coming up. Click on that. Click on that. And if somebody else has an iPhone... They have to have an iPhone. It can't be Android. You'll see AirDrop, which is like three quarters of a sound wave. Click on AirDrop. And when you click on AirDrop, whoever, it will identify everybody who has an iPhone. It's very dangerous in a public place. If you're doing it, even if you're socially distanced outside of Starbucks and you're sitting in an outside area, you're going to have a problem because within 20 feet of you, every single person who has an iPhone, they're going to come up on your phone screen as do you want to share that photo with that person? But if it's your family or something um, or your friend, you'll see their name and you click on them and then you'll hear that it's, it's really funny. It's going doo -doo 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 -doo, and that's the transmission sound. Um, airdrop on I7, same thing. Click on a photo, open a photo. You'll see that little rectangle in the left-hand side with the arrow coming out of it. Click on it and you'll find AirDrop. Oh, by the way, you better have in your settings AirDrop turned on as well. If you don't have AirDrop, you have a lot of people have not used AirDrop. So that again, go to your general settings and Again, scroll over to make it green, add AirDrop to the features your phone has. Okay, did that answer it? I hope that answered it. And again, got to have AirDrop turned on in your settings. And in fact, if something's not working, most of the time you'll find out it's because you have you didn't turn it on. Anything else? Are we Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? I think we're good. Okay. Well, thank you all for sharing this time with me. I love Ollie. I think Ollie Online is here to stay. Um, I have a passion for tech teaching. My big love is AR, VR, virtual reality. So if there's anything else, and I do do one-on-one. -on -one, so um, if you want to go out and drink coffee outside at a table, I'm not going to do inside yet, but if there's any way I could help any of you, 
socially distance and you want to buy me a coffee somewhere, um, let me know. And again, such a pleasure to be here with you this morning. I hope it was helpful. I know once I send the slides out, uh, the uh, slide to show to you, um, you can hook up and link and, and hopefully you'll see the Hoffmans again as they're practicing Siri for the first time. Again, wish you all well, stay safe, stay well. Uh, look forward to seeing you when this is all over.